Macron and Le Pen are through to the second round. Is this good news for France? Well, I think it's a big sigh of relief for, uh, for France, for Europe, the European Union, and maybe even for the global liberal order, right? I mean, the last couple of weeks, the main worry was a kind of horrible runoff between a candidate from the extreme right and a candidate of the extreme left, which was avoided. Macron is a broadly pro-European, progressive, um, pro-openness candidate, and so I think that appeals to most of the elites. Whether he's going to bring about the change that France wants and France needs uh, remains, remains to be seen. What would Patrick McCarthy have said about the outcomes of the first round of the presidential election? Well, I imagine Patrick would have looked at these elections from a long-term historical perspective. And I think he would have said that one sees the persistence of three historic challenges that France faces. Historic problems that France can never solve definitively, but which each generation must, to which each generation must find a modus vivendi. Number one, the problem of France's relations with the Muslim world, with the Maghreb specifically, the legacy of colonialism. Number two, the problem of governability of France, arising from the fragmentation of French political culture, from the persistence of so many political families and factions, which the Fifth Republic Constitution was supposed to address. And third, and maybe even most importantly right now, the German problem, how to exert control over a certain degree of control and influence over Germany. What can we expect from the markets in the run-up to the final round? So, in the run-up to the final round of the French presidential elections, I think we should expect a big market sigh of relief as market participants look at Emmanuel Macron and the rally of forces around him and realize that the threat of some extremist anti-European group taking over the French presidency has receded quite a bit. So I think that's probably the good news. The more interesting market implications have to do with the uh, accommodation that's been introduced, particularly by monetary policy authorities who are expecting much more volatility to come out of this vote, or if not expecting it, at least preparing for it. They've been using the potential for that volatility as an excuse to maintain very accommodating monetary postures where they're engaged in large-scale asset purchases and extraordinarily low interest rates. And it's time now for them to begin exiting from this unusual and awkward position. Because Emmanuel Macron looks so likely to become president of France, because that means that the uncertainty and volatility that a different electoral outcome would have represented has gone away, the central bankers no longer have the justification of this to maintain their unconventional monetary posture. And we're expecting increasing pressure to build for them to begin positioning themselves for an exit from these unconventional monetary policies that they've implemented during the crisis.